And every time we move into personal space, our bodies automatically adjust and change. And those are the things that happen. Um, you know, and if you've got big hard hooves in the front, you will chip up and loosen up. So again, the paradigm is Australia never had hard hoofed animals. But every single one of you have seen where kangaroos go under the fence all the time. Yes. Now, if you took a 35 kg kangaroo, popping along at 35 kilometers an hour, dropping from 35 centimeters onto that, the impact is actually far greater than a 400 kg cow trotting along at 10 kilometers an hour, dropping its hooves from 10 centimeters onto a big thing like that. You know, kangaroos can produce huge. And why is it we see that track under the fence? Because they do it every day. It's got nothing to do with having hard hooves or not. It's all about what's happening in your head. And what do you want that surface to look like? If you want that surface to get churned up and loosened up and change, well, bunch your animals. They will do that for you. And we can control that by bunching animals. In the old days, pack hunting predators, packs of lions. And how did these animals defend themselves? They stayed bunched. So I'm gonna bunch you. And as we bunch you up, <laughs> listen to you giggling, your tones have all pitched up, you know, everything's changed because you're in personal space and you behave differently. So if we're all bunched as you were here, all bunched up nice and tightly here, okay, you're gonna spend more time on your toes, you're gonna to chip the soil up, you're gonna loosen it up, but also what are you doing? You're dunging and urinating on your plate. No animal likes to eat on its own feces. So if we're all bunched up here together, dunging, urinating, chipping away, okay, how long can we stay here? Not very long because there's not a lot of food. How long before we come back to that pit, patch of ground? Not until the dung and urine has worn off. Now, how long does that take? Depends on earthworms, dung beetles. And at some point in time, we can bring those animals back. Okay, so the minute we bunch animals, suddenly they impact bare ground. They impact thorn bushes. They impact gray oxidizing plants. Here's our bit of gray oxidizing grass, okay? How many raindrops is that bit of grass stopping from hitting and compacting the soil? Maybe one, if you're lucky. Okay, the minute we knock that bit of old grey grass under the ground, how many raindrop does it now stop? A lot more, okay? If you've got bare ground and you've got that sideways movement of water, how much is that going to slow down the sideways movement of water? So it infiltrates more to create more life. Hardly anything. But the minute we knock it down, suddenly it has a huge impact on slowing down the moisture, okay? If I said to you, how much do you think that's going to impact creating a nice cool environment for microbes to live in our soil. So when it's 50 degrees out there, your soil isn't at 70 degrees. Not a lot, the minute we do that, suddenly it's gonna have a huge impact, okay? So how do we get our animals to stand on that old gray grass, to stand on those thorn scrubs, to stand on those undesirables that can actually have that huge positive impact to our environments? How we do it? You bunch them, you bunch them. And all we're trying to do is mimic nature.